The disappearance of 20-year-old Heather Elvis is a mystery that's puzzled police in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. She vanished in the early morning hours. All that remained was her car, parked in an eerie place called Peachtree Landing. I definitely think Heather went to Peachtree with intentions to meet someone that she knew and that she trusted. Thousands in South Carolina join police looking for Heather. They search for months. Then the Horry County Police Department arrests two people. Charges of murder in the disappearance of 20-year-old Heather Elvis have now been leveled against Tammy and Sydney Moyer. Sydney Moore had an affair with Heather. Police say his wife, Tammy, threatened her. They're charged with the kidnapping and murder of Heather Elvis. I am beyond 100% sure that the, the people that are charged are the ones that they need to be charging with it uh, since day one. The Moors are also charged with obstruction of justice and strangely enough, indecent exposure. That was part of their alibi when first questioned by the cops. A police report shows the Moors claimed they were having sex in their car when Heather went missing. I would just urge people not to uh, reach a conclusion, but not to assume that someone's guilty uh, simply because they've been arrested and charged. The prosecution's evidence against the Moors is all circumstantial. They have numerous threatening texts from Tammy to Heather to end the affair with her husband, Sydney. One text read in part, quote, someone's about to get their beat down. Your is about to take his last breath. You can tell me where you are right now, or I will find out another way. That way won't have a great turnout for you. I'm giving you one last chance to answer before we meet in person, only one. The prosecution came up with a timeline during those crucial hours before Heather disappeared. Here's what they think happened based on phone records, witness statements, and video evidence. 1.35 a.m., police allege Cindy Moore called Heather from a payphone. The call lasts for almost five minutes. At 1.44 a.m., police also say Heather then calls her friend Brianna. She told me Sydney had called her. He said that he left his wife and that he missed me and he wanted to see me. Phone records indicate Heather calls Sydney's cell phone at 3.17 a.m. Prosecutors determine that Heather is still at her apartment and that Sydney is still at his house. Authorities believe after that conversation, Heather gets into her car and then drives three miles to Peachtree Landing. At 3.36 a.m., a private residence camera captures a dark colored truck coming from the direction of Sydney's house, heading towards Peachtree Landing. Another camera at a business location records the truck getting closer to Heather's location. Heather's cell phone pings show she is now parked at Peachtree Landing and repeatedly calls Sydney's cell phone from 3.38 a.m. to 3.40 a.m. And the last call that Heather makes that's live is 3.41 a.m. And authorities say that the phone goes dead shortly after that. There's no other data from her phone. Around 3.46 a.m., the same black truck ID'd by police heading back in the direction of the Moore's house. The police believe that the black truck belonged to Sydney and Tammy Moore. The couple does own a black truck similar to what was caught on camera. The defense, of course, saying there are a number of black trucks that might travel this road. Sydney and Tammy had been held without bond for several months. The attorneys convince a judge to allow them out for $100,000 each. Jimmy, how do you have to jail right now? They've got to wear GPS monitoring and they can't, they've got to be within a five mile, outside of a five mile radius of Heather Elvis's family. It's now been almost two years since Heather went missing and the most talked about murder trial in South Carolina has not begun. Numerous delays have only increased speculation as to the strength of the prosecution's case. Whether a trial happens or not, we may never know what happened to Heather Elvis. And this one is an absolute stunner. A judge allows Sydney and Tammy to move from their home in South Carolina to Florida until the start of the trial. Tammy and Sydney's attorneys argued to the judge that they needed work, uh, that, that Sydney needed to work and had an option or an opportunity to apply for a job in Florida. I was beyond outrage when I heard it. 
I'm, I'm numb to it at this point. Because you I, have I, to live every day without your daughter. Yes. Uh, it's, it's To me, it's like rewarding them. I, I don't understand it. Now comes the most painful blow to date for Heather's family. Prosecutors have dropped the murder charges against Sydney and Tammy Moore. It's very disappointing that the murder charges are dropped. It gets harder every time this happens, every time something new breaks. We're still looking for Heather every day. And we're looking for answers every day. Heather's parents are quick to point out the Moors are still charged with kidnapping Heather, and they're hoping now somebody will step up out of the shadows. The murder charges being dropped might get somebody who hasn't come forward to come forward and say, okay, justice isn't being done, so I need to tell what I know. I do know that those charges, although they're not going forward with them at the time, uh, they're not something that won't come back again. Despite the most recent drama and the two years of torment, Heather's family still clings to hope of finding her alive. This is what my hope is. I need to find Heather. That's my hope. There's not a day that goes by that we don't just pray that she walks in the door. But at the very least, we want to see justice served.